Come on in, come on in. Good evening, good evening, good evening, good evening. Y'all come on in, come on in. Auntie popped up on y'all, baby. Popped up on y'all. For an old live, I done popped up on y'all, baby. Come on in, come on in. Yes, baby. Come on in, come on in. Check on in this thing. Come on in, all my divine ones. All my divine ones, baby. How y'all doing? How y'all doing? Come on in. Come on in. Hey, blessed in every area of my life. Ashley Washington, how you doing? Changed and chosen, how you doing? Come on in. Michaela Jones, yes, baby, we in this thing. Come on in. Felucia, come on in. God's warrior, Nana, come on in. Tamil, how you doing? Good evening. Hey, Alicia, good evening. Come on in, come on in. Kaylee, I see you. Kimberly, Anita, I see you. Alicia, I see you. Good evening. Hey, Cameron. Hey, Diamond Holland, come on in, come on in. Natasha, come on in. Krista Wanna in this thing, come on in. Yes, baby, check on in. Y'all check on in, come on in. How y'all doing, how y'all doing? Good evening, good evening, good evening. Auntie had to pop in on y'all, baby. Popping up. Popping up on y'all. <laughs> Popping up on y'all. I told you, you better make sure you got them notifications on, baby. Make sure you got them notifications on. Make sure you subscribe to the channel. Make sure when you click that little bell right there, you click all. So anytime we live, anytime we hit y'all with the random pop-up lives, you get that notification to your phone, baby. Come on in, come on in, come on in. How y'all doing? Make sure y'all share. Make sure you share this live with somebody. God gonna put the person in your spirit. He gonna put them in your heart. Who you need to share this live with, baby? Send it to them. Send it to them. Send it to them. Share it, share it, share it. Because every time you share, every time you hit that like button, baby, you advancing the kingdom of God. You helping more people get their transformation. So y'all make sure y'all tear that like button up, baby, and share this video with somebody tonight that you know is going to bless them, even if they don't look at it right now. They'll come back to it later. God going to send them right on back to it. <laughs> they might be running. They might be, I, who is this? I don't want to hear this. I don't want to listen to this stuff. But God going to rope them right on back in, baby. Holy Spirit going to rope them right on back in. <laughs> and when they come back in, this video going to be sitting right there in their phone waiting on them. So make sure y'all share. Make sure y'all share it with mama, share it with daddy, share it with your cousin, your co-workers, your sister, brother. Share it with somebody today, baby. Y'all come on in, come on in. Because I hear the Lord say that you are elevating in this season. You are growing in this season. He's taking you higher. Somebody put that in the comments, baby. Y'all remember that word we did? God said higher. God said higher. Y'all put it in the comments, baby. Say higher, higher, higher. I hear the Lord say higher shall be your portion, baby. No longer will you stay on that same level that you've been on. No longer will you stay on ground zero. Your season for ground zero is up. I speak this over each and every one of you tonight, baby. As you come into this live, I speak life over you tonight. Mm. I speak deliverance over you tonight. I speak power, a spirit of power over you that you will no longer be powerless, that you will no longer be laying outside of the things of God, laying by the wayside. But this is your season where you shall rise up. You shall become the person that God has created you to be. And God is taking you higher. If you receive that tonight, put it in the comments, baby. Say, I receive it. I receive it. Put it in the comments, baby. If you receive that thing, if you receive your portion tonight, if you know that higher shall be your portion, if you know that deliverance shall be your portion, if you know that abundance shall be your portion, put it in the comments, baby. Say, I receive it. I receive it. Every day you get up, baby, you got to make sure you tell God that I am open and receptive 
to all that you have for me today. I welcome all the abundance of God into my life today. I want y'all to say that every single day you get up, baby. Tell God, say I'm open and I'm ready to receive. I receive it, I receive it, I receive it. Because a lot of our stuff is trying to get to us, but but because of the thoughts that we thinking in our mind, because of the stuff that we entertaining, because of the stuff that we allowing to distract us, we blocking the abundance of God. We blocking the blessings of God. We blocking the overflow. I hear the Lord say, remove the blocks. Remove the blocks. Somebody put it in the comments, baby. Say, I got to remove the blocks. I want y'all to get y'all journal, get y'all blue ink pen, baby, because we about to kick off a whole spiritual masterclass on this thing tonight. You better make sure you slide on up in here, baby. Even if you can't catch it live, set some time to come back and watch the replay, baby, with your journal and with your blue ink pen. Because I hear the Lord say that you trying to squeeze. I just heard God say, you better not let me catch you trying to squeeze in some stuff that you done outgrown. <laughs> you better not let me catch you trying to dim your light. You better not let me catch you trying to water yourself down because gone are the days, baby. Come on now. Gone are the days that you water yourself down in order to make other people feel good, in order to make other people feel great, in order to make other people feel like they doing something. You got to try to act like you ain't making no moves. You got to try to act like you ain't got nothing going on. Come on now. I hear the Lord say, baby, that you too big for that. You too big for that. God spoke this thing to me some years ago. And he bringing a lot of these messages that he spoke years ago to me. He bringing a lot of these messages back. And that's one of them. You too big for that. What is it that you still trying to squeeze your way in? When the Lord has elevated you from that point. Because a lot of times we pray and we ask God. God, deliver me from this. Deliver me from that. Take this from me. Take that from me. God, help me to help me to move beyond this. Help me to move beyond that. Lord, help me to help me to be successful. Lord, give me increase. Lord, bless me with this. Lord, bless me with that. And I remember I did a message about this one time. We got to be careful too what we be asking God for. <laughs> We got to be careful what we be asking God for. We got to be careful what we be asking God to give us. Because we got to understand that in order for that thing to come into our life, we got to make room for it first. Some stuff got to be cleared out first. Some people got to be cleared out first. And see, we want to, some, some, some of us, we want to, understand. hush, watch. <laughs> Y'all hang on, baby. Watch, talking to me. Some of us, we want to try to hold on. We want to try to hold on to some of these people. We want to try to hold on to some of these habits. We want to try to hold on to some of these old ways. We want to try to hold on to some of these old mindsets. This, this thinking, thinking. We want to try to hold on to it and receive the abundance of God. We want to hold on to all the stuff from our old life and still receive the new. But it don't work like that. Somebody put it in the comments, baby. Say, it don't work like that. <laughs> it don't work like that. I tried that, baby, and it don't work like that. You take your closet, for example. You got all that stuff in your closet. You got all them clothes, all them shoes, all them bags, all that stuff. You ain't got, you can hardly get in now. You might have a walk-in closet and can hardly walk in. You can't even hardly walk in now because there's so much stuff in there. And then you go to buying more clothes. You go to buying more stuff. You go to people go to getting you stuff. All you get out, you go to bringing all kind of stuff in the house. It gonna only be so long before you gonna run out of room in that closet. You're not gonna have no room to put nothing else in that closet. You're gonna have to clear. If you're gonna keep buying stuff, if you're gonna keep bringing stuff in, you're gonna have to clear some of that stuff out. You're gonna have to give some away. You're gonna have to donate something. You're gonna have to clean it out. You're gonna you gonna you gonna have to do something. And God say that's the way it works with our minds. That's the way it works with our spirit, with our heart. Before we can receive the abundance of God, before we can receive the blessings of God, the anointing of God, baby, because Jesus said, I come that you might have life. He says, the thief cometh but to kill, steal, and destroy. But he says, I have come that they might have life. And that they might have it more abundantly. Mm. 
the other morning when I was reading in the scriptures, God had me to read a, a translation of that scripture where it broke it down into a, into another phrase. And when Jesus said, I come that they might have life and that they might have it more abundantly. He was also saying, I come that you might have a rich and satisfying life. Mm. Somebody put that in the comments, baby. Say rich and satisfying life. Jesus said that this is what I came to give you. This is part of your inheritance. I come to give you a rich and satisfying life. And he quickly reminded me that when I say rich, I ain't just talking about money. I ain't just talking about money. I ain't talking about, I ain't just talking about physical riches. That's a piece of it, but that ain't all of it. A rich and satisfying life. This is your portion. This is what the father has for you, baby. This is what Jesus, this is, this is what he came to bring you. I come that you might have life. Will you receive life tonight? That's what I hear him saying. Will you receive life tonight? And not only just life, but will you receive the abundance? I feel the power of God. Will you receive the abundance of God? A rich and satisfying life. God said, I want you to be rich in peace. Mm, Y'all write that down. Get your journal. Get your blue ink pen. When he say rich and satisfying life, when he says, I come to give you the abundant life, he said, I want you to be rich in peace. Tell y'all what God told me real quick, baby. I'm going to get back to the central message, but I want y'all to listen to this. This is what God told me the other day when I was in my house. Children were gone. Everybody gone. House quiet. And I was just about to fix my mouth to say something. God said, I, I, you better not say that. I was just about to say, it's too quiet in him. <laughs> and God reminded me, and this is what he's saying to some of y'all. He said, before you fix your mouth to say, it's too quiet in him. Before you fix your mouth to say, look, just like them old folk, baby, down here in the South. They say, I, I, you better not fix your mouth to say that. I was just about to fix my mouth. You, I hear God say, before you fix your mouth to say, you bored. Before you fix your mouth to say you ain't got nothing to do. Before you fix your mouth to say it's too quiet. Ain't nothing going on around him. He said, remember that there was a time. Who am I talking to tonight, baby? Remember there was a time that you prayed for peace. Remember when your life was chaotic. Remember when all hell was breaking loose on every hand. Remember when you couldn't get no rest, you couldn't get no peace. So he say, before you fix your mouth to say, you bored, you ain't got nothing to do, it's too quiet around here, ain't nothing going on. He said, you better remember the days. Somebody put it in the comments, baby, say, I remember the days. I remember the days, because see, when you got the Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit will bring things to your remembrance. Joshua, thank you so much, baby. Holy Spirit will bring things to your remembrance that you might have, you, it might have slipped past you. You forgot. <laughs> Sometimes we get delivered. We forget how, about the hell that we went through when we was going through that stuff. Somebody put it in the comments, baby. Say, I remember the days. Michaela, thank you so much, baby. That's it. A rich and satisfying life. God say, I, he said, part of your portion, part of your inheritance as the chosen one, as a follower of Jesus Christ, he said, I come to give you a rich and satisfying life. And he said, you're going to be rich in peace, rich in peace. You shall have a peace that passes all understanding, a peace that passes all understanding. Joshua, thank you so much, baby. A peace that passes all understanding. I want y'all to write that down. Get your journal, get your blue ink pen, write it down, baby. Say a peace that passes all understanding. People will not even be able to understand how you still smiling, how you still, you, they, they see the circumstances that's happening in your life. They see stuff going on in your life, but then they see you still at peace. They see you smiling. That's because you have received your inheritance. You have received your portion. Part of your portion is a rich and satisfying life. You shall be rich in peace. That's what God reminded me of the other morning. And he said, for you fix your mouth to say it's too quiet in him. Remember the days. Some of y'all living in your answer prayers and you missing it. You missing it because you ain't got the money yet. You missing it because you ain't got the promotion yet. You missing it. You missing it because you ain't got the bonus yet. You missing it because you ain't met the man yet. You missing it because you ain't met the woman yet. You got to look at the things 
that God did not already did in your life. Come on now. There was a time that you prayed for this peace. God ain't going to just pluck you out of hell and, and set you in, in the promised land. There's a transition period that you have to go through. There's some alone time that you got to spend with God. There's some reconditioning of the mind that has to happen. Because if not, we will create the same cycles. We will create the same experiences with new people. I want y'all to write that down. I want you to put this in your notes. There must be a reconditioning of the mind. The mind must be renewed. I must be transformed by the renewing of my mind. Because if not, I will recreate the same experiences with new people. It ain't no people on your job. It ain't that job. It ain't, it ain't, it ain't your, you know, whoever it is you, you in a relationship with. I'm going to tell y'all like how my pastor would always tell us. She said, you can go wherever you want to go. You're going to take you with you. <laughs> Everywhere you go, you're going to take you with you. You're going to be right there. You can't leave you. You're going to be right there. So you might well work on you. You might well fix you. Come on now. I hear God say, rich in peace, rich in peace. I come that you might have life and that you might have it more abundantly. But you got to receive this. You got to come up higher in your thinking in order to receive this baby. Higher shall be your portion. Glory be to God. And I hear God saying that I have called you to greatness. Joshua, thank you again, baby. I hear God saying I have called you to greatness. Somebody put it in the comments. Say God has called me to greatness. He's calling me to greatness. No longer can I stay on ground zero. God say your spirit. When he say you too big for that, he talking about your spirit. He talking about who he created you to be in spirit. Your spirit is too big for that. Uh, Alicia Blackman, thank you so much, baby. I hear God say some of these things that you may still be entertaining, some of these habits that you may still be entertaining. He say, I have called you to greatness. Your spirit is greater than that. Your spirit is bigger than that. Greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. You have a whole inheritance that's waiting on you, baby. I hear him say, why? Why would you choose to live in the chaos? Getting sucked up in the things of the world. When I have come to give you life more abundantly, all you got to do is receive it. What we said, I receive it. I receive it. Every day you get up, you got to tell God, I am open and I am receptive to all the good that you have for me, to all the blessings that you have for me. Lord, I welcome the abundance of God into my life. I receive it in Jesus name. And I hear him saying, greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. So do not fear anything that is in the world. Do not fear anybody that is in the world. Come on now. What we said, baby, put it in the comments. Say, I ain't never scared. <laughs> I ain't never scared, baby. That's what I hear the divine one saying, baby. I ain't never scared. For God has not given you a spirit of fear, but he has given you a spirit of power. Oh, a spirit of love and a sound mind. Somebody put it in the comments. Write it in your journal tonight, baby. Say, I ain't never scared. Even if you full of fear. You better speak that thing into existence. You better call forth those things that be not as though they were. Tell the devil, I ain't never scared. I'm standing on kingdom business, baby. And I ain't never scared. That's it. That's it, Kimberly. I ain't never scared. <laughs> That's it, Alicia. Come on now. God said, we take, look, we taking some of that stuff we were picking up out there in the world and we're going to use it over here in the kingdom, baby. We're going to use it over here in the kingdom. To those of you that know, you know that you know. Okay, you you don't you know when you was back in them bone crusher days. <laughs> What's some of my bone crusher divine ones at, baby? You when you was back in them bone crusher days, you out there in the club, you telling the devil, I ain't never scared. I ain't never scared. Now we in the kingdom, baby, and we standing on kingdom business and we telling the devil, I ain't never scared. That's it, baby. God has not given you a spirit of fear, but he has given you a spirit of power. Of love and a sound mind. Divine ones ain't never scared. You chosen. You chosen. You set aside for God's own use. For God's personal use. And see I had to realize. 
See, God gave me this word first before I could come give it to y'all, before I could come teach it to y'all, before I could come preach it to y'all. He gave it to me first. He said, woman, you you entertaining some stuff. You connecting to some stuff that you done outgrown. He said, you too big for that. Your spirit is too great for that. He says, I have called you to greatness. He said, why are you trying to dim your light? Why are you trying to dim your light? Somebody put it in the comments. Say, no more dim in my light. No more dim in my light. Let your light so shine. Mm. For the Bible declares that no man light a candle and put it under the table. When you light a candle in your house, do you hide it? Do you put it under the table? Do you put it under the bed? Cameron, thank you so much, baby, for your seat. Y'all make sure y'all share this live, baby. Hit that like button. Hit that like button and share this live. Every time you do that, you're helping more people get their transformation. I hear God say, let your light so shine. Shine, baby, shine. <laughs> Somebody put that in the comments, baby. Say, shine, baby, shine. I got a sign right here in here in my prayer closet that my mama bought me a few years ago. It says, shine on. Shine on, baby. Let your light so shine. Don't you dim your light no more. Don't you water yourself down. Listen, if you round folks that can't take you at 100, if you round people, you got friends, you got people connected to you that they can't take you at your greatness. They can't, they can't stand your light. They just feel like you doing too much. And all you doing is being who God called you to be. Come on now. I hear him say, shine. Let your light so shine. Ooh. So that men may see your works. So that people may see your works. And they will glorify your father. Which is in heaven. Baby, that's the assignment. That's part of your assignment that God has put on your life. You got to shine your light so bright to what people say. Who is that? Who is that? You walk in the room, they heads turn. <laughs> you walk in the room, heads turn. And it ain't because of the physical. It's because of the spirit that's in you. It's because of the anointing that's in you. It's because of the calling that's on your life. People don't even know what it is. They staring at you and they don't even know why. They don't even know why. They can't take their eyes off of you. Who am I talking to today, baby? They can't take their eyes off of you. You walk up in that thing. You like, Ooh, I got something on my nose. <laughs> Do I got something in my nose? You looking in the mirror. You like, is something on my chin? <laughs> what going on? Do I got something on my face? Like, I'm, I'm... It's that light that's in you. And don't you dim it no more. Do you hear me? Don't you dim it no more. Don't you try to hide it no more. I hear the Lord say, put your shoulders back. He said, hold your head up high, baby. And he said, let your light so shine. He said, when you walk in that room, baby, let your light shine. Let your light shine. Prince says, welcome to the membership, baby. I hear God say, let your light so shine. So that when people see your works, so that when people see your deeds, they will glorify your father, which is in heaven. This is how God get the glory out of our life. That's why we can't be dim in ourselves. We can't be dim in our life. We can't be watering ourselves down because every time we do that. Come on now. We missing an opportunity to give God the glory. We missing an opportunity to let our light shine. We missing an opportunity to be a witness to somebody for the kingdom of heaven. Don't you be watering yourself down. You too big for that. You too big for that. Just like we tell them children. Why are you still doing that? You, 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 you 13 years old now. You 16 years old now. You still, you, you too big for that. You too big to be acting like that. You too big to be doing that. I hear the Lord say, why are you dimming your light? Why are you trying to act like greatness ain't in you? Why are you sleeping on yourself? Why are you keep, you can see it in everybody else, but you can't see it in yourself. You too big for that. Oh, baby, the calling on your life is too great for that. The anointing that's on your life is too great for that. You done been through hell. You done been through some stuff that would have left some folks six feet under. It did put some people six feet under, but you still here. You know why you still here, baby? Because God got that calling on your life. And I hear him say, you ain't finished yet. Put it in the comments, baby. Say, I ain't finished yet. That's why the enemy can't take your life. Oh, that's why he can't destroy you, baby. That's why he can. That's why you didn't perish in that relationship. That's why the enemy couldn't take you. He couldn't take your life. I just heard God say for many of you, the enemy had you in seasons where you were sleeping with the enemy. You 
was sleeping with the enemy and you ain't know it. You was cozied up with the enemy. You was cuddling with the enemy. <laughs> you was in what they call it, cuffing season. You was in cuffing season with the enemy. Sleeping with the enemy. All nice and cozy. Netflix and chilling with the enemy. God say you're too big for that. You're too big for that. What I told y'all on the last live we did. God said it ain't work because you the chosen one. You did all you could to try to make some of this stuff work. You jumping high, you ducking low, you doing all kinds, of, you, 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 you standing up in the pulpit every day in your house preaching your work, telling people how you ought to be treated, telling people how you how they ought to be friends with you. People know how to be your friend. They know what a friend do. Come on now. They know what a they know what a husband do. They know what a wife do. They know what you're supposed to do when you love somebody. If it ain't happening, then that, that God say that ain't it. That ain't it. What relationship you done outgrew? Situationships you done outgrew. Mm. Friendships you done outgrew. You too big for that. You tell them something. You laughing. It's funny to you. It's a joke. You telling them they looking like they looking at you like a deer in headlights. What that mean? I don't get it. What that mean? I don't get it. <laughs> Y'all, y'all, y'all don't, y'all don't speak the same language no more. It's no, I blow English. They don't get it. it get, the lights ain't on in now. They don't get it. Y'all don't speak the same language no more. You done elevated. You done grew. You been getting knowledge. You been reading. You been attending events. You been going to seminars. You been working on your business. You been working on your body. You been meditating. You been praying. You been reading. You been studying. You've been taking notes. You've been connecting with other eagles. You've been in iron, sharpened iron environments. And they ain't been doing nothing. <laughs> they ain't been doing nothing. They've been sitting on the porch looking at the cars ride by with them old six pipe. <laughs> with them old six pipe. Passing a, passing a you know what around. That's what they've been out there doing. So that's why when you come around and you talk to them, y'all don't speak the same language. Because, see, you stretching your mind. And they ain't doing nothing with theirs. But there's a sense of loyalty. Look at how the enemy do. You feel a sense of loyalty. Well, they was there for me back in 1999. They was there for me back in 2002. They was there for me. Let me tell y'all something that we say all the time. The best thing you can do for people that you love, the best thing you can do for your family members, the best thing you can do for your, your old friends, the best thing you can do for your loved ones is to get your transformation. Do you hear me? Become the person that God has created you to be. That's the best thing that you can do for the people that you love. Let them see the word of God come alive in your life. You're doing a lot of talking. You're doing a lot of convincing. God say, uh-uh. He said, hush your mouth. You too big for that too. You too big for that too. I used to do that. Running my mouth. Talking. Oh, it's different this time. I done changed this time. Y'all gonna see. I'm doing this. I'm doing that. I'm making moves. Like God say, hush your mouth. Hush your mouth. You too big for that. He said, let the vision speak. Mm. He said, at the appointed time, baby, the vision shall speak. Somebody put it in the comments, baby. Say, the vision gonna speak. I ain't got to talk. I ain't got to convince. I ain't got to I ain't got to convince nobody. I ain't got to persuade nobody. If that vision came from God at the appointed time, it going to speak. It going to speak. Do you understand me? And it going to talk that big talk, baby. It going to shut everybody up. It's going to shut the doubters up. It going to shut the haters up. It going to shut them all up. You ain't got to go tick for tack. You too big for that. Come on now. No more tit for tat. You ain't got to go tit for tat. You ain't got to stop and get nobody together. You a divine one. I know you ain't stopping trying to get nobody together. Look, like they be saying, let me find out. <laughs> uh, let auntie find out. Let me find out you going tit for tat. Let me find out. You trying to get somebody together about something they said. Let whoever think whatever. See, 
Because when you got a vision that came from God, all you got to do is put your head down and get to work. All you got to do is get your transformation, baby. Because that one thing about that fruit, that fruit don't lie. That fruit don't lie. They can call you whatever they want to call you. I done had people call me everything but a child of God. Do you understand me? Cuss me out from left to right. Tell me I'm a false prophet. Tell me I'm this. Tell me I'm that. People from the past and people still to this day. You know what I did? Put my head down and got the word. Continue to self-develop. Work on myself. Work on my spirit. Tend to my home. Tend to my children. Tend to my family. Tend to my household. Work in my purpose. Tend to my purpose. Do what God called me to do. Mind my business. <laughs> Mind my business. I ain't stop what I ain't stop not one day doing what God told me to do to go back and address what somebody said. Let whoever think whatever. You too big for that. The moment you go and try to get somebody together by something, you just minimize yourself to the level that they own. You too big for that. Come on now, Tyresha. Chicken days are over. Y'all ain't watch that Eagle series. Go back and watch that Eagle series on my channel, baby. Chicken days is over. We don't do that. I'm too big for that. Somebody affirm that tonight, baby. Put it in the comments. Say, I'm too big for that. I'm too big for that. Listen to what God told me. Tell y'all, baby. He said, your anointing is too great. Your anointing is too great. Your calling is too great. Your calling is too impactful. The impact that God has put in your spirit, you're going to make a huge impact. You are making a huge impact for the kingdom of heaven. That's why the enemy trying to get you distracted with, with little nonsense stuff. That's why he's trying to get you distracted with little petty stuff. Because he's saying, if I can get you distracted with little petty stuff, if I can get your attention on the... Y'all know how this little stuff go to popping up that just aggravates you. It just annoy you. It irritates you. It get on your nerve. It just be little. The devil know the little stuff that get on your nerve. He come with the little stuff to push your buttons. Here come no mingling, mingling, meddling, petty co-workers doing little stuff to get on your nerve. <laughs> then if you're a bit like, if you're a business owner, you're an entrepreneur, the enemy say, okay, you might not have no co-workers no more, but I get in some of your clients. <laughs> I get in some of your clients. I get in some of your, your people that's in your audience. I get in some of your people that's on your social media platform. I have them come through your emails. I have them come through your DM. Oh, best believe he know what push your button. He know what make you tick. And God say when it come, when the attacks come, recognize who you are. Understand, I ain't finna go off because that's what you want me to do. I ain't finna go off because that's what you want me to do. The enemy want to get you out of character. He want to get you in the heat of the moment. That's the way he works. He want to get you in the heat of the moment. He want to get you to strike. He want to get you to attack when your emotions are high and you're not thinking. I hear God say, stay conscious. I want y'all to write that down, baby, with your journal. I told y'all we in a master class tonight. <laughs> write that thing down, baby, in your journal with your blue ink pen. Say, be conscious. Be aware. Be aware. Don't be drunk in the spirit. The Bible tells us to be sober. Be vigilant. Watch. Stay on your post. Don't you leave off your post. That means you got to be watching. You got to be watching, baby. Be sober. Be vigilant. Because your adversary, which is the devil, he goes about. Walks the earth like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour and who he may destroy. He want to devour you. He want to destroy you. So you got to be conscious. And God spoke to me one day. He said, when you, when you, when you are conscious, when you are being conscious, when you are being intentional, I want y'all to write that down. Be conscious, be intentional, be aware. When you are conscious, when you are being intentional, when you are aware of your surroundings, when you are aware of your environment, when you are aware of what's going on spiritually, when you are self-aware, write that down as well. Self-awareness. Self-awareness. You need to be aware of what's going on in this body. What's going on in your spirit? What are you feeling right now? What's on your mind? What are you thinking about? 
Okay, wait a minute. How did my mind get on this? Where did this come from? Where did this come from? Hold up. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. I'm feeling a little depressed right now. What done snuck in? What done snuck in? Where did this come from? Why am I feeling like this? Let me get my journal. Let me get my blue ink pen. Let me write. Write your negative emotions and your feelings. We talked about this in uh, our membership, the Latoya O'Kill Academy membership. I talked about this with my students. Don't just be letting these negative thoughts live rent-free in your head. Mm-mm. Uh-uh. Uh-uh. You ain't finna live rent-free in my head. You finna get out. I'm serving the enemy notice today. You finna get out. You finna, Because if you don't say nothing, if you're not aware of what's going on for you know it, baby, you've been depressed two weeks. You've been in the bed two weeks. Y'all know I'm telling y'all the truth. You don't want to do that. You don't want to talk to nobody. You don't want to work out no more. You don't want to drink no water no more. You don't want to fast no more. You don't want to write in your journal no more. You ain't spoke no affirmation since 2022. You ain't <laughs> you ain't read no scriptures. You ain't you just don't want to do that. You don't want to do nothing in your business. You're not motivated. So you got to be self-aware. Successful people are self-aware. They are in tune with their bodies. They are in tune with their spirit, with their mind. They don't let stuff creep in unnoticed. So I want you to be aware. I want you to be intentional. I want you to pay attention. And I want you to be self-aware as well. So be aware of the things, the external things and the internal things. Self-awareness is being aware of the internal things. What's going on internally? And when the enemy comes to trigger you, when he comes to push your button, when he comes to get you high in your emotions, to make you tick, to make you go off. See, when you're self-aware, you catch that. When you're conscious, you catch that. You catch it. And you recognize that this is a spirit. This is a spirit. This is a spirit that's trying to get me off my post. This is a spirit that's trying to distract me. This is a spirit that's trying to tempt me. This is a spirit that's trying. But God say, don't be, he said, don't be lured away by your own lustful desires, by your own selfish desires. That's why we got to allow God to transform us by the renewing of our mind. Because see, the enemy know. He knows those secret desires. He knows those secret things that you want. And he'll come and tempt you with it. He'll come and tempt you with it, and he'll come and try to uh, get you in your emotions. Get people to push your button. It happened with your own kids. Do you understand me? You a parent, you know what I'm talking about. It happened with your own kids. As soon as you get in the spirit. I done, had, I done had to check some spirits right here in my own house with my own children. As soon as you get in the spirit. As soon as you go to praying. As soon as you go to worshiping. As soon as you get caught, they go to start. Soon as I'm, soon as you're trying to do a video, soon as you're trying to do a Zoom, soon as you're trying to do a message, they in there fighting. Uh-uh. Bye, devil. <laughs> Bye, devil. Come on now. So you got to be self-aware and you got to be paying attention. You got to be conscious. God say, I don't want you falling asleep at the wheel. You too big for that. I need you to keep your eyes open and be conscious of what's going on in the spirit. Because your anointing is, is too great. Your calling is too great. For you to be getting sucked up into this stuff. Sucked up into these distractions that the, that the enemy is throwing at you. And you got to have a strategy. I want y'all to write that down. Strategy. It's very important that you have a strategy. You cannot win against the enemy. One of my favorite movies is War Room. And I love that part where the elderly lady, she says in the movie War Room. She was telling uh, Priscilla Shiro. She was telling her that. You can't win against the enemy if you don't have a strategy. You're going to need a strategy. Because the enemy plans. He strategizes. He watches. He studies. The Bible tells us he goes about like a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour and who he may destroy. He strategizes. He plans. This is why we have to develop new habits to where we strategize. 
where we plan. You need to do this by yourself and you need to have other people that you can do this with. I do this by myself and I have Eagle friends. I have Kingdom Connections that we get on Zoom. We meet up in person. We may get on the phone. We get our journal. We get our blue ink pen and we're going to strategize. We're going to brainstorm. We're going to come up with a plan. Those are the type of people that you need in your life. And I speak this over you tonight by the power of God, by the power of the Holy Spirit. I speak this over you tonight that these are the type of people that you are attracting into your life. But you got to speak this. You got to touch and agree with me on this. You got to declare this to be your portion, that I am connecting with eagles. I am connecting with other eagles. I am connecting with people who have knowledge and who have skills and who have abilities and capabilities and talents and connections that I need. To fulfill my God-given purpose. Because I can't do it all by myself. I can get far, but I can't do it all by myself. I'm going to need to connect with other eagles. Iron sharpen iron. As iron sharpen iron, so does one person sharpen another. I speak it over you tonight that God shall send people into your life that will sharpen you. That will wake you up in the spirit. People that will, people that believe God on a whole nother level. People that believe God on a whole nother level. People that's walking on a whole nother level in the spirit. People that's praying on a whole nother level. People that's got a whole nother type of anointing. People that's got a whole nother type of power. I speak that over you tonight. That God is sending people into your life. That have what you need to get to your next level. Mm. For many of you, you are just one connection away. You are one connection away. That's why God say, stop, stop trying to be around people just for the sake of loyalty and for the sake of whatever the enemy putting in your head. If it's not feeding your spirit, if that friendship ain't feeding your spirit, if that connection, if that association, it ain't feeding your spirit. It's not adding value to your life. You're not able to learn something. See, you got to be around things and be around people and environments that you able to learn something. They able to teach you something. And you got to stop being intimidated when you go in rooms like that. Stop being intimidated when you meet people who have more than you. That's what God reminded me. He said, stop being intimidated. And he's speaking this to y'all as well. Stop being afraid. Stop belittling yourself. Stop being intimidated by people that have more than you, that know more than you, that are connected to greater, to, to, to other connections than you. He said, that, why do why you think I'm bringing them around you? I'm bringing them around you so you can glean off of them, so you can receive what they have. Because it's going to stretch you. When you see what they doing, when you see what kind of moves they making, when you see what, how, child, you need to get around people that make your dreams and your goals seem like it ain't nothing. Seem like it ain't nothing. Seem like, you know what? I need to think bigger. <laughs> I ain't thinking big enough. You be like, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. You doing what? <laughs> you got what? Wait a minute. You can do that? I ain't even know somebody could do that. I ain't even know somebody could have that. Come on now. Stretch that mind. Stretching that mind. So you got to let that intimidation go. You too big for that. You got to stop belittling yourself. You too big for that. You are supposed to be in rooms with giants. That's what I just heard your daddy say. You're supposed to be in rooms with giants. Why are you afraid of giants? Why are you afraid of giants? You're supposed to be in rooms with giants. Don't run from them. Children of Israel, when they got to the promised land, they seen giants in the land. They ran. They were afraid. I hear God say, don't run from the giants. It's time to face the giants. Because you belong there too. Don't let them run you away from your promised land. Come on now. They got to move over. They got to move over. They got to move out the way. They got to make room for me. <laughs> Come on now. Somebody write this down in your journal with your blue ink pen, baby. A man's gift, a man's gift will make room for him. 
Mm. And it will bring him before who? What that gift going to bring you? Going to take you in front of who? Great men. Great men. People of influence. Mm. People of influence. People of power. People with connections. See, God said you better know what you're doing when you mess around and go to getting that transformation and working that gift and getting in your purpose, baby. Because that thing going to elevate you. It gonna, God said, I'm going to take you into great rooms. I'm going to put you in great rooms. So I need you to understand who you are. I need you to understand that I'm calling you to greatness. This is what I hear your father saying, baby. I need you to understand that greatness shall be your portion. I need you to understand that greatness belongs amongst other greatness. You are greatness. Greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. You belong in the room with the giants. And God said, I don't want you belittling yourself and watering yourself down for the sake of making other people feel comfortable, for the sake of making other people feel good about their mediocrity, making other people feel good about being average. Making other people feel good because they ain't did nothing. Uh-uh. They got to do, they got, they got to elevate. They got to elevate. And, and take your stance in the spirit tonight. Like they say, stand ten toe down. <laughs> stand ten toe down tonight and speak this over your life. That if anybody going to be in my circle, okay, if anybody going to be connected to me, you're going to have to come up here where I'm at. Or you better be higher. Sharice, thank you so much, baby. You're going to have to come up here where I'm at. And you know what? I ain't looking for people where I'm at. I'm looking for people that's further than me. I'm looking for people that's bigger than me. I'm looking for people that's greater than me. That way, they ain't hating on me because of the little stuff I got. When I ain't even did nothing yet. <laughs> I'm still trying to become. You know, come on now. You're still trying to become. You don't need people around you hating on you. Like, but child, this ain't nothing. I thank God. But God said, we ain't even scratched the surface yet. You ain't even scratched the surface of what, of what God got for you. You still on the shore. You need people that done been out there in the deep. <laughs> you need to be around some folks that done launched out into the deep, baby. They know what them deep waters look like. They done, they done, they done jumped one time. At least one time. They done took some risks. They done bet on themselves, and they done seen the other side. Come on now. Irma, welcome to the membership, baby. Come on in. Come on in. You need some folks that have been out there in the deep. Not these folks tipping Ryan up here on the shore. Lord, takes me, take me amongst people that's out here in the deep. People that's swimming in the deep end. People that's living on a whole nother level. People that's serving on a whole nother level. People that's doing stuff that I ain't even never heard of. You too big for that. You too big for small rooms. You too big for small minded people. You too big for them small habits. Them old habits. Them old beliefs. That old mindset. You too big for that. God said, I'm stretching you. I'm stretching you in this season. If you, if you like them old clothes. If you like them old clothes. Too big for them. Can't even wear them no more. <laughs> Can't even wear them no more. If you get some of your clothes you had when you was in third grade and try to put them on now. God said, that's what we be looking like in the spirit. That's what we be looking like in the spirit. Watering ourselves down. Trying to squeeze back into them little kindergarten chairs. <laughs> just because all our friends, just because all our family members, just because all our associates, they still sitting in these kindergarten chairs. And they comfortable in them. They fit right in them. But you try to squeeze in it, God said it ain't going to work. You too big for that. I have called you to greatness. Your anointing is too great. The light that's in you, it shines too bright. It cannot be dimmed. 
You cannot be watered down any, any longer. Your calling is too great. I want you to affirm that tonight. Put that in the comments. Say, my calling is too great. I realize, Toya, your calling is too great. That's why it ain't work. That's why it didn't fit. That's why it didn't work out. That's why it didn't go as planned. It wasn't a bad thing. God got another plan for you. He got a different plan for you. Your calling is bigger than that. Your anointing is bigger than that. Some of these folks, you try to join yourself to, God said it like oil and water, baby. It ain't never going to mix. It ain't never going to mix. See, when you got a huge calling on your life, do you understand me when I tell you that there are certain type of people that have to be connected to that? Small-minded people can't take that. It's too much for them. It's too much for them. They think you they think you showing out when you just being yourself. They getting offended when you ain't did nothing. You need people around you. Come on now. That done been in the deep end. So when you shine, they right there saying, shine, baby, shine. You better. <laughs> you better do that, baby. Come on now. Congratulations. You need people up there like this. That's my friend, baby. That's my friend right there. That's that's what that's what I'm, that's what I'm talking about. That's my baby right there. That's my wife right there. That's my husband right there. You need people front row. Congratulations. Congratulations. That's what I'm talking about. I always knew you could do it. That's what I'm talking about. And then they ain't just coming around when you get there. I'm talking about, oh, I always knew you could do it. I always knew it was something special about you. Bye, devil. Uh-uh. These are the people that go, they, they in the trenches with you, supporting you. They in the trenches with you, speaking life into you. They in the trenches with you, helping you strategize, helping you come up with a plan, dropping something on you when you need something. Oh, let me sow a seed into you. God told me to sow a seed into you. Financial, spiritual, mental, emotional, they sowing into you. Because they see what's in you and they respect you for who you are in the kingdom. They respect you for who you are in God. I speak it over you tonight that that shall be your portion. That God is bringing those type of people into your life. And you're coming into a season where everything is going to fit. It's going to fit, baby. The clothes, the spiritual clothes that was too tight on you, that you was trying to squeeze in. You coming into a season where everything is going to fit. Y'all receive this tonight, baby. I'm finna go, but receive this. You coming into a season where you're going to get them a little bitty clothes to somebody else. <laughs> you're going to get them a little bitty clothes to somebody else. And God, you, you're going to put on your new robe in the spirit. Your new clothes in the spirit. And that thing ain't going to fit. It's going to be just like when you go in the store and you're in the dressing room and you try on something and it's a perfect fit. Somebody put that in the comments, baby. Write that down in your journal. Say perfect fit. God sending a friend that's going to be the perfect fit. God sending a man that's going to be the perfect fit. God sending a woman that's going to be the perfect fit. You won't have to squeeze in it no more. Environments, people, places, things. That's a perfect fit. I love y'all so much. I love y'all so much. Don't shrink yourself no more. Be who you are. Unapologetically. Authentically. Be who you are. Because what I have seen from being my authentic self from being myself, just who God created me to be, being my authentic self unapologetically, making no apologies for it, being myself, being real, being raw, being uncut, just being me, being Toya, <laughs> talking like I talk, walking like I walk, working in my purpose like God told me to work in my purpose, not like how somebody else doing. That's fine if that worked for you, but I'm going to do what worked for me. Doing what God told me to do, being confident in the Holy Spirit, being bold, standing on kingdom business in my gifts. You know what? A lot of people fell from my life and it hurt. It hurt. But that made room for the perfect fit. Jerome, welcome to the membership, baby. 
Remember I told y'all I gave y'all the example of the closet. You bring, you want new clothes, you want new shoes, you want new attire, you want a new wardrobe, you got to get rid of that old. You cannot take your old life with you. Shanquel, thank you so much, baby, for your seed. You cannot take your old life with you. You got to make room. So when God start plucking, understand that he's making room. He's making room. He's making room. When he start pruning, understand that he's making room. Glory be to God. I love y'all so much, baby. I love y'all so much. Make sure y'all go to LatoyaOkeaAcademy.com, baby, and join us for our body transformation challenge. We're going to be kicking that thing off in just a few days. May 1st, I'm on a mission to help 500 of my divine ones, baby. Drop that weight, transform your body, and get in shape. Make sure you sign up. And if you're going to be in the Florida area, the Tallahassee, Florida area, or you can be there around June the 7th, I'm going to be in Tallahassee, Florida on June the 7th, live and in person. Go to LatoyaOkeaAcademy.com. I'll put the link in the description for y'all in just a minute. Uh, and sign up. Get your ticket live and in person for the Divine One Seminar. I'm going to be giving you the knowledge, the tips, the tools, the strategies that you need to be successful in your life your business, and your spiritual walk, baby. So if you can get there, get there. And we are actively working on uh, create, trying to create a virtual ticket for any of you that can't make it physically in the room. Uh, we may be able to have that option available for you too where you can purchase a, a virtual ticket and you can view the seminar from online. So we're working on that. And I'll let y'all know when we get an update on that. But I love y'all. I love y'all so much. Go and be blessed. Go and rest in the Lord. Go and just embrace this season that you're in. Remember I was telling y'all just a few minutes ago, if God got you in that season where things are quiet, things ain't really just happening like that, things ain't just taking off for you like that, remember that there was a season that you prayed for peace. God is, Jesus said, I come that you may have a rich and satisfying life. And part of that rich and satisfying life is being rich in peace. Rich in peace. So embrace the season that you're in and remember that you prayed for this. You are living in some of your answer prayers. And I want you to use that to motivate yourself, to encourage yourself that if God brought this to me, if God delivered me from this, then he's going to take me the rest of the way. I love y'all so much. Y'all be blessed. I'm praying over you, praying for you. And Father, right now in the name of Jesus, I pray that this word tonight, that it will fall on good ground that it will fall on good ground, and that it will bring forth much fruit in the lives of your people. I speak over each one of them tonight, God, that they shall rise up with a new strength, that they shall understand mm, who they were called to be in Christ, that they shall understand their true identity, and that they will no longer dim their light, that they will no longer shrink themselves, but they will understand I'm too big for that. And I'm called to greatness in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. I love y'all so much, baby. Y'all be blessed.